Woodrow Derenberger was a typical Appalachian man and salesman for a sewing company who lived in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. On November 2nd, 1966, at about 7.30 p.m., while returning from Moretto, Ohio to his home, he had a strange experience. He was driving in his red panel truck on Route 77 in Parkersburg, West Virginia. He claimed that he saw a cigar-shaped metallic colored craft. The ship traveled right by his truck and blocked the roadway ahead and gradually made him slow down to a stop on the side of the road. Woodrow described the vehicle as the strangest thing he'd seen and said it resembled a kerosene lamp chimney. The craft was hovering about 12 inches off the road. A door opened on the craft, a being exited the ship, and the door shut with a loud thunk behind him. Later, the vehicle climbed about 50 feet into the air above the highway. The being walked right up to Derenberger's truck window. Derenberger described the man as looking like any ordinary man off the street, six feet tall, about 35 years of age, olive complexion, dark brown hair, and wearing a long black trench coat. The man spoke to Woodrow telepathically. His mouth did not move. Instead, he had a fixed smile on his face. The man looked in through the truck's window and said without saying something along the lines of, Roll down your window, I want to talk to you. During their communication, the man called himself Indrid Cold. He told Woodrow that he meant no harm. In the famous Derenberger interview, he said, I was very frightened, but as far as I can understand, this was all mental. There were no spoken words from him. I knew what he was asking me, but yet he stood there and his mouth did not move. He had a smile on his face. He appeared very courteous and friendly. Indrid Cold, Mr. Derenberger's conversation lasted about 10 minutes. Cold told him, I sleep, breathe, and bleed even as you do. Before returning to the flying craft, he said, We will see you again. Derenberger later reported this event to the police. An older man claimed that he too saw a figure matching the description of Indrid Cold on Route 77 trying to flag him down, but he was too afraid to stop. Derenberger's conversation with Cold can be corroborated. Other people saw lights and fluttering vehicles at the same instant on the road. There were several witnesses that reported seeing Woodrow Derenberger stop on the highway talking to this man, and some even saw the flying craft parked on the road. Reports poured in of strange lights in the sky and beings, all at the same time, at the same place, on Highway 177 on the night of November 2nd, 1966. Woodrow's story gained traction in the media, gaining news coverage and attention after the Parkerburg's police believed his story. A representative of the Air Force even contacted him soon after his accounts were documented. During this media storm, he went on live TV in Parkersburg, West Virginia, where he was interviewed by the state police and Wood County Airport, the city police, and representatives from the Dayton, Ohio Air Force Base. Over the course of the month that followed, Derenberger claimed he visited Indrid Cold many times, and they even took him in a spaceship to his planet. Indrid Cold would also appear at Woodrow's front door. His wife and children even knew that this Indrid Cold was paying him visits, and they even eventually came forward saying they too saw Indrid Cold and other strange beings. Woodrow's wife was terrified and said that these beings were much like us, traveled in everyday cars, dressed in everyday clothes, but were not human in origin. There was even one time where Mr. Derenberger disappeared for six months and said he was with Indrid Cold. This is what members of his family actually believed. He would also receive mental messages from his long-distant friend. They would come suddenly and leave piercing migraine headaches. His residents would often receive strange unknown phone calls. Sometimes they were threats to stop speaking about his experience. Other times they were odd beeps and electronic hums. Sometimes it was just silence. The family changed their number to an unlisted one, but somehow the calls continued. His story gained such media attention that locals would flock to his house all hours of the day and night and wait in crowds in his driveway to catch a glimpse of his friend, Indrid Cold. Bogle Ridge is another location associated with the story. Derenberger claimed to go there to meet with Indrid Cold and go on rides into outer space. Some locals claimed to actually seen the spaceships land there. On one occasion, two men armed with loaded rifles were hiding in the woods by Derenberger's property. They observed a black Volkswagen enter the front yard. A peculiar man dressed in an all-black suit with tan skin exited and talked with Woodrow before leaving. The hunters were disappointed. They waited even longer, wanting to see something truly terrifying, but maybe they already had. Woodrow hadn't heard of the men in black, but after his visit, he was extremely frightened by them. Derenberger eventually decided to seek medical attention and the opinion of a Parkersburg psychiatrist. He not only left with a clean bill of health and absolutely no evidence of chemical imbalance or disruption, but his very doctor endured a reaction soon after their meeting. He was contacted in December by a most peculiar man. His name, Indrid Cold. He doesn't reach out by phone, but telepathically. This experience didn't just negatively affect Woodrow Derenberger himself, but his family and his close friends. It came by the way of years of harassing phone calls, people trespassing on his property, ridicule, embarrassment, job loss, friend loss, headaches, and depression. He suffered a bitter divorce and had to move away from the area because of his notoriety. 
He would later tell how his writings would disappear from his locked house, and letters he sent would never reach their destination. He felt he was being watched. He moved away to escape his past, and lived elsewhere for a long time. Years later, he moved back to the area and passed away in 1990.